Hello everybody, welcome to this demonstration on rail load optimization available in LUSAS from version 18 onwards. For this demonstration I'm using a two-span box beam bridge where the box beam has been modelled in shells. So the top slab, bottom slab, both webs and the diaphragms are all modelled using shell elements. Now within this model I've already defined the centre lines of where my rail track is going to go. It's going to select the first group this is going to be the center line of my up fast line. I can go to bridge, railroad optimization, track definition to turn these selected lines into the definition of a track. And if we go to plan view, we can now see that we've got a visualization showing us sleepers, um, just something to indicate where the track is going. If we then also select up slow and repeat the same sequence. And we now have two tracks shown on our bridge. We can then group these tracks together and say they can be loaded at the same time by going to track layout. I'm going to call this layout through running where I have both of these tracks loaded at the same time. If I just make it invisible. Now also on this bridge we've got a crossover where trains can move from the up fast to the up slow. And once again, I'm going to go through and create a track definition for this. And at the same time as this crossover being loaded, I'm going to say we can also load the up slow line as far as this point here where we're going to have a signal. So if we do this through the track definition, this time I'm going to tick closed end. Say that the right hand end of this line is a closed end and closed by a signal. That's indicated here by this thicker brown line. Now what this means is that if when doing the rail load optimization, if there's any long vehicle with lots of wheel loads that has been defined, the wheel loads can hang off the left hand end, edge of the bridge, not over the bridge, they can't hang off the right hand side of this line. We're then going to group these two tracks together in our second track layout, which we're going to call crossover and signal. The next step is to define the load effects that we want to optimize for. In this model, I'm only going to do two just to make it a simple and quick demonstration. I'm going to look for force moment in NX, so that's going to be axial force, and I'm going to use that to look in the top slab at longitudinal force. I'm also going to pick MY, and that's going to be transverse bending which I'm going to look at also in the top slab. So I'm going to select a node in the left hand span that I'm going to optimize for longitudinal force. Uh, that's axial force in the top slab, which is effectively going to be what's causing us maximum bending in the overall structure. I'm also going to pick a node about here where I'm going to look at the transverse bending. Now I've only selected one node for each. In a real analysis, I'd be selecting lots of nodes in order to make sure I picked up the most onerous one. But for this demonstration, I'm just picking one of each just to uh, make it simpler and quicker. If I now go and turn back on our visualization of our tracks, and then I'm going to create the optimization by going to bridge, where we load optimization, our low run. Now we've got various design codes available within LUSAS. Uh, currently we've got the UIC as the international code. In the United States we've got ARIMA. In the United Kingdom we've got uh, both our Euro code and also national rail code. But for this example I'm going to be using the recommended values from the Euro code. Now I'm only going to be running this optimization for EURLS characteristic. Well, we can also run it for these, but again simplifying the uh, model for the demo. For the dynamic factor, we can either define one determinant length L theta, which will be used for all influences, but because of the different types of influences we've picked in this optimization, we need to specify a separate one for each influence. If we then go into the set influences dialog, I'm going to optimize for negative for both. So for the longitudinal force in the top slab, uh, the Euro code tells us for a two span bridge it's the average span length multiplied by 1.2. So that's going to be 35, both 
bands of 35 meters times 1.2, which is 42 meters. For the transverse spanning, it's three times the transverse span, which for this structure, four meters, so three times four meters gives us 12 meters for our determinant length for the dynamic factor. I'm going to both generate the table and also generate the loading patterns. And I'm going to run this first of all for the through running track layout. If I click OK, Lucas will do the optimization for me. Here we can see in the table that for the transverse bending, it found a maximum bending moment of 29.6 kilonewton meters. And the longitudinal axial force, it found 2,360. We can also go and have a look at the load cases that were generated for this. So for the longitudinal force, we can see that we're loading one of the rails with a SW2 vehicle. The other rail is being loaded with LM71, so we have a track. For the transverse slab, we can see that we've got LM71 loading in both tracks. Now, if we look longitudinally down the bridge, what we can see is we've got a bigger red arrow here than we do here. So that's showing that we've actually got the rocking effect taken, taken account by Lucas, which is putting the higher load on the rail that is more onerous. We can then copy this RLO run and paste and create a new one, which is going to be RLO run two. And this time we're going to use, it, use the crossover track layout. So if we double click, everything else we're going to keep the same, but we're going to change it to being crossover and signal. And here we can see the results. This time transverse bending 74.5, that's a lot bigger than the 29 we got earlier. Longitudinal force, it was previously 2360, now we're found at 2080. So what we can see is that one track layout was more onerous for our longitudinal force in the top slab here, and the other layout was more onerous for the longitudinal transverse bending in the top slab here. And if we look here at the load cases generated, we can see that Lusas has articulated the load around the corner of the track for this layout. And for this one, we can see that it's where it's found the most onerous place to put the loading. Obviously, for this structure, we only had two effects we were looking at, and it was quite easy and quick to compare which of the track layouts gave us the more onerous effect. Even in a real structure where there are lots of uh, influences being checked, I'd recommend creating an envelope so we could therefore put all the longitudinal load cases into one envelope. And we could put all of the transverse MY load cases into another envelope. We would then be able to look at the envelopes in order to find our most onerous load case. Thank you for watching this demonstration.